Aye. Four points have separated these two schools the last three years. Now, NC State has had the upper hand. Remember, the Wolfpack won three of the first four bouts last year in winning 21-18 back at Reynolds Coliseum in Raleigh. But this is a new year, and when you look at this matchup tonight, 15 ranked wrestlers, five head-to-head -head ranked matches, and I know you love the one at Wrestler 125. Fans, that is going to be the last match of the, mat of the night. Jacob Camacho returning to ACC champion against the precocious freshman Sam Latona. I can't wait for that final match. But then also at 184, we're going to have a rematch of the ACC championship where we have Trent Hidley and Hunter Bowling. Trent Hidley would get in, but he could never finish because Hunter Bowling's defense was that good. The question that we have now, has Trent Hidley made the adjustments to get through the stellar defense of Hunter Bowling? We're about to find out in about an hour. Hunter Bolin, Trent Hiley, two tough guys. Bolin beat Hiley twice last year. Hiley has yet to get a takedown. We're going to look forward to that one at 184. It's interesting, though. We start at 133 tonight. Corbin Myers, the sixth-year senior for Virginia Tech. Jarrett Trombley, the redshirt sophomore for North Carolina State. We weren't sure who the Wolfpack would send out. The last uh, couple of weeks, Ryan Jack, the true freshman from Danbury, has been Pat Papalizio's choice. But tonight, they will go with the redshirt sophomore, the NCAA qualifier Trombley from a year ago. And look at that quick pick and Meyer in on the quick strike. That was slick. But it's not just getting in, it's all about finishing. And Jared Trombley is doing a good job of locking around the hips. No control. You can hear them saying, keep wrestling. NC State wants Jared Trump to keep wrestling. Look like we might get a stalemate here. No one looks like they can improve from this position. Jared Trombley, five and one on the season, and he is successfully able to fend off the early strike by Corbin Myers. Good look at Trombley, went 20 and nine last year. Three and two in ACC duels, plays fourth at the ACC championships. Myers has a quick just hesitation shot. Just even though nothing's happening, he's setting up Trombley, trying to see how he reacts. Just a little motion. So it's like a chess match here and there. A little dab here. It's a quick Ooh. counter and the change of direction. And Myers lightning quick. He's in deep. Let's see if he can finish this second one. And he does. Two points for Corbin Myers. And Virginia Tech fires the opening salvo. Beautiful chain wrestling. Snap one way. He defends, snap the other way, drop down to a single, go to a double. Great start for the Virginia Tech Hokies. Myers coming off that impressive win last week over Jamie Hernandez of North Carolina. Put up 11 points, and Hernandez is a tough guy to score on. 5-0 and this year, perfect in ACC duels, working on that cross face in the riding position on Trombley inside a minute to go in this first period. This is, this is uncomfortable here. If he can lift it up and get his body across, you can't go and back bow it, but you can go across and maybe at what we may say 11 o'clock. This is uncomfortable for, for Trombley. It looked like he was tapping a little bit. He's not going to let this go. Keep working here, guys. Myers continues to punish in the riding position. 20 seconds to go, opening period. Trombley all bellied out. He'll get tagged with a stall underneath. College wrestling, the second stall call is a point for your opponent. So remember that as we go deeper into this 133-pound bout. Myers with the takedown, and he will go into the second period leading 2-0. Year number nine for Pat Papalizio, the two-time ACC Coach of the Year, and what a run he has the Wolfpack on entering tonight. The nation's best, 22 consecutive dual victories, looking for number 23 and a win tonight. Would clinch at least a share of the regular season ACC title. Hey, Red, remember, I'll set you first, okay? So wait for me, okay? Hearing Kevin Linick. 
Throughout the entire night, our referee mic'd up, Fred Majerison, the second official. Guys, relax. Okay, remember, set then whistle, okay? So just wait for me. Green stays set. The official's just red. telling them, look, the nerves are out. Everybody's a little jittery. You want to jump a little bit? Just relax, fellas. We got, we got a match. Explosive stand up by Myers, trying to rip away, and he is free and a 3 0 lead for Corbin Myers. Third year in Blacksburg for Myers. Left Edinburgh, is... winning 74 matches for the Fighting Scots. Went through a coaching change with Tim Flynn departing. So did Myers, and he has found a home in Blacksburg. On critical time to match. It's only 3-0, but a takedown with the riding time with Corbin Myers can start to open this up. Trombley's got to get back in there. This isn't the position that Corbin Myers wants to be in. He's had a good jab step, lower, pop, pop, pop. He's got to get out of this. This isn't really helping him. This is where Trombley feels more comfortable. Left arm underhook for a moment by Trombley, but Myers just so quick on that strike in on the single. And for the second time, he takes down Jared Trombley. As soon as there was separation, he went right for the shot. So he sees that I'm quicker, I'm more efficient when there's, when there's space. Now, he's starting to say, okay, I can control on my feet. Let's see if I can create more. Look at this shot. This is, oh boy, he's looking good already, and he's feeling it right now. Immediately looking to cut, and confidence already high coming into this match for Corbin Myers, the three-time NCAA qualifier. John, we can't overstate how important it is to have a six-year senior, but not just a six-year senior, but someone as good as Corbin Myers. We were talking with one of the coaches that weren't in this match, and they said Corbin Myers is one of the most underrated wrestlers in the nation. And for what we're seeing right now, he's showing that he is good. Just look at his activity, his footwork spinning both directions. To turn that corner either way, working off that front headlock. Probably trying to slow it down a little bit. Like Myers took a glance at the clock. He realizes he's in pretty good position going into this third period. All the momentum with their most veteran wrestler trying to light the spark early for the Hokies. I love the jab step. He's going to jab step and going right for the lower ankle. By staying low on the ankle, there can't be a roll through. A little jab step and quick shot. Ah, look at that. Good wrestling and not wasting time, not getting caught up in the scrambles. Get the ankle, finish quickly. How big is this veteran presence in Coach Roby's room as well? He has a lot of freshmen, a lot of talented freshmen, and then you factor in the sixth year guy, Myers, who has showed the ability to overcome adversity throughout his career, mainly in the form of injury. Missed all of last year with a serious injury. Utilized his medical red shirt. Rock, you know the value of having a battle-tested senior in that room each day, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. Battle-tested, and he wants to be there. There's some guys that keep another year for wrestling just to be there, but Corbin Myers is going, he's relentless. He's working on his stall calls, moving his hands, doing a little jab step. Oh my goodness, that was so quick and so nasty. Ugh. We talked about it earlier. This is exactly what Virginia Tech felt they needed to get from Myers. And now you start to think about the bonus point possibility. As we described earlier in the open, this is a uh, duel that usually comes down to the wire. Tony Roby trying to figure out a way to knock off Papalizio and the Wolfpack two-time ACC Coach of the Year. Actually, the first coach in the history of ACC wrestling to guide his team to the ACC title in his first two years. Another shot by Myers, and he's in for two. He this has riding definitely. time locked as well, so he's into that major decision category, which would be a bonus point, 14 points for Virginia Tech. He is looking so good on his feet. Chris clean, moving his hand, doing a jab set. Ruben Myers is showing off for the nation. Improve, guys, improve. Yep. Oh. This is a great start by Corbin Myers for Virginia Tech. Start off with a major, not just a lucky major, a dominant major. Well done. 
Tony Roby knew he wanted a veteran in this lineup this year. He felt with the balance of freshmen and senior leadership, they could have something brewing special in Blacksburg. Myers delivers at the opening whistle. A couple of early takedowns, dominant on his feet. The Hokies grab the early lead. Boy, did he look good. Play all year. I mean, he is just. <laughs> oh. That's why Roby wanted to start there. Pat Pompelizio has been able to string together solid recruiting class after recruiting class, and you see the end result. Nine ranked wrestlers heading into this duel tonight. A Wolfpack team that really had aspirations of making some serious damage last year at the NCAAs. Everybody back for Papalizio, and it's a loaded lineup, and, and you see, Brock, why they are primed and ready to, to make another big, deep push come St. Louis next month. They were very disappointed, like many teams, by the cancellation of the NCAA. They felt that they were going to compete, not just to place in the top 10, but to get a trophy. 141, Virginia Tech up 4-0. It will be Tariq Wilson, the redshirt senior for North Carolina State. Roby had a decision to make at this weight. He had a couple of options. He elects to go with his youngster, the true freshman, Sam Hillegas of Pittsburgh. North Hills product, a 4-2 record, 0-2 in ACC duels. This was a decision, Rock, that... Tony Roby told us it was made less than 24 hours ago. He wasn't sure if it would be Hilligus or Colin Girardi. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes you just know when, when, you, when you see your your athletes compete in the room, just seeing how that how their week was. Did they have any uh, tough tough uh, classes or some things, any stress? But clearly, Coach Roby felt good about Sam Hilligus, and he's not your average freshman. Nick Wilson unbeaten this year, 5-0, and and he has saved some flair for the uh, closing moments of his matches. Three straight weeks, Wilson has been involved in some barn burners. He's come out on top, beat Brian Courtney, rallied to beat See Courtney 8-6. Gave up a late takedown on a headlock by Pitts Cole Matthews, but he was able to survive that, that forced sudden victory. He ended up prevailing in the tiebreaker 7-5, and then last week, some late fireworks again and knocking off 10th ranked Zach Sherman, 9 6. No control. Yeah, something that Hilligus has done in one kind of a shrug to what's called a Merkel. Make it a side headlock and try to get the leg in. But when you have someone as tall as Tariq Wilson, it makes it a little no more control. difficult. He's going to pop his head, and no Hilligus control. is good at scrambling, so he's going to try to pass the other ankle. But good job by Tariq Wilson here to get the first takedown. Yeah, there's some of that length that you were talking about. You saw him come right in on that double. Get the two, and Hilligus underneath for the first time inside a minute to go. Quick stand up. Hilligus trying to rip that grip. The good mat return by Wilson brings him back down. And we will get a fresh start in the center. Now, in general, you get nervous when freshmen are on the mat. But historically, Pennsylvania wrestlers are good mat wrestlers. But when you have a fifth-year senior versus a true freshman, a battle-tested fifth-year senior, he has to move quickly and have chain wrestling, move after move, and not get caught. Three freshmen in Roby's lineup tonight, including Hilligus, plus you factor in Makai Lewis coming back from the Olympic red shirt season ago so this is a revamped virginia tech lineup a hokey squad that placed fifth at the accs last year very disappointing performance and that certainly was a used as motivation during the off season wilson trying to get some late points in on a shot Clear his head, doesn't have a lot of time. Hilligus content to keep this position and avoid giving up further damage, and that's what he will do. Wilson with a two to one lead. 
So in this position, you have to get your ankles away so the guys underneath can't roll through. And because of the length of Wilson, Hillegas couldn't reach over to try and pass the leg across his body. Three time NCAA qualifier is Tariq Wilson, twice at 133. Made the bump up to 141 last year. Green stay set, cover red. Looking to win his first ACC title. Later in the month, he's come up just short. Straight seasons of finishing as the runner up. It's to return Hillegas to the mat before that five second count. He does, a two to one lead. Early stages of this second period. What I like about Hillegas is that as soon as he gets to the mat, he's moving and exploding back up, not giving uh, Tariq Wilson an opportunity to get his long arms and legs wrapped around him. So he's doing good by continuing to wrestle Green even set. when he's brought back to the mat. Cover red. What are you noticing from Tariq Wilson, Rock? We watched a lot of him throughout his career. He had that magical run in 2018 of the All-American podium, placing third at 133 as an unseated wrestler. Where have you seen him grow and mature the most? Poise. It's poise as you get older. You become more and more confident in knowing what you know and just being in the grind of wrestling, knowing what nuances happen when you wrestle someone. And right now, he's poised. Last week, he was poised. The week before, he was poised. The week before that, again, you just can't coach that. It comes with experience. Hilligus will get there. Tariq Wilson is there with being poised. Tell you, Sean, you can hear the coaches. They, they're ready. They're riding the referee already. Riding, just giving them grief. Hey, he's stalling. Hey, what happened at 33? This is different. You can hear right now. They're working the official. And then we got a stall call on the top wrestler. We knew it was a stall call on the top wrestler because they stopped the action. So if the top wrestler is stalling, the referee has to stop the match. So at some point, the working of the ref got through. Pat Papalizio wanting an explanation. Let's listen in with Kevin Lynch. Well, I thought in this case, your guy just had a tight waist, and that's all he was doing. He was sitting in that tight waist, and he didn't come off the hips for 30 seconds or so. Wow. Okay? So that's why I called it. We got a warning, Red, questioning. Look at the psychology here. It didn't make a difference. He wanted to put some doubt and Kevin Lynch is here to say, look, look, what's the difference between what happened at 33 and what happened at 41? And so Kevin Lynch said, look, I just didn't feel that he moved. But he's putting some, some uh, seeds for maybe 149, 57. Hey, 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 be fair, be consistent. Good mechanics here by Coach Papalese. It truly is a chess match, isn't it? <laughs> it's a corner and the, and the officials throughout the course of the night. doesn't mean anything. He got a question of the official. He's like, whatever. He question of him. He just wants to plant a seed. Like, look, the next time this happens, you better not call my guy for stalling. Be fair. That's what coach wants. Be consistent. And Kevin Lynch is one of the better referees in the country. So let's let's put the pressure on Wilson now. He, he was riding that tight ways for a while. Obviously, that was not working. Kevin Lynch did not like that. What do you want to see Wilson go to for the final 40 seconds? Well, you just got to move. You know, pop from one side to the other. You just can't lay uh, parallel. You got to move to one side or just do some action. Let's not ride here, but good job. Look at the length. That's just the length. A little step over by the freshman. Looks like you may get a Peterson. Hill is He's still like close. A... They're saying that Tariq Wilson is still in control right here. 13 seconds left. Unbelievable. He didn't give up that Peterson. John, we just talked about this poise. Poise. You can't coach poise. Tariq Wilson <laughs> rides for the entire second period. Don't forget, next Friday, we're back in Blacksburg for our final Friday night duel on the ACC Network. 15th ranked Pitt will be in town to take on the Hokies. Friday night duels right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. We talk about being battle tested. And, and Tariq Wilson has been in there. He didn't panic, said, I'm not in the Peterson. I'm going to give up. Let me start the belly down. He said, let me just continue to wrestle through this. And got the riding, uh, rolled him out for the whole second period. 
So what do you think of this decision to start on the feet in this third period? It's respect. <laughs> respect. He said, you know, Sammy Hill, guess even though he's a freshman, he's good. Well, he gets the freshman out of Pittsburgh, lunges in on Wilson. Wilson trying to smother as he's getting pushed for the uh, boundary. Puts on the brakes right at the edge. Hillig is trying to drag him back with that right leg. Toe dragging the right foot at the same time. So he's trying to maneuver Wilson while at the same time keeping that foot in bounds. So action's allowed to continue. Look at He'll try to pressure. pull him back again. And now they go out. Wow. Now remember, Tariq Wilson has a stall call. He has to wrestle. But Tariq Wilson has been in this. I was in this last week. Relax, coach. I, I'm, I'm good. Look at the two-time Pennsylvania state champion. Signed with the Hokies prior to 2019. Took Sherman of North Carolina to sudden victory last week. Battling the two-time ACC runner-up tonight. Comes in on a shot, but look at the counter there and the two by Wilson. He was just waiting. Roll through by Hillegas, but Wilson sticks with him. Sam Hillegas would learn from this. When you have someone as tall as Tariq, you can't shoot straight on. It has to be a couple of shots. Because guys, if he 30, can defend, he can have enough momentum to go around. Patience. We talked about the poise of the fifth-year senior. But Hillegas did what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to continue to attack. He started to feel the momentum. I had the leg in on out of bounds. But again, Great job by both wrestlers. Tariq Wilson showing why he's an All-American. Sam Hillegas has Blacksburg getting excited for years to come. North Carolina State is on the board. Three points secured by Tariq Wilson. He remains perfect in ACC competition. We talked about the boys. We talked about the length. And he just did what he had to do. Being a strong wrestler, staying in control, making sure that Virginia Tech doesn't get out too early and gets the wolf pack right on the board. A bonus point is the difference early on from Blacksburg. Both of these teams have relied on the bonus points throughout the course of the year. Virginia Tech with a high number in their seven duels in C State. With a 5-0 mark, I'm sure we might see a few more over the next hour or so here from Blacksburg. Sean Kenny, Rock Harrison as we move up to 149. And you talk about bonus points, you talk about big moves, buckle up if you have a seatbelt. Bryce Sandonian, Ed Scott, this is gonna be fun, Rock. Someone might be launched. I have no idea because Ed Scott will throw the underhook in and lock around the back of the neck. And then Andonian, he'll do something and you'll say, what was that? And then you'll find out when the guy's on his back. Andonian's about as unconventional as they come, but it is great theater, fun to watch, and he's had a lot of success. The ACC runner-up last year at 149. Remember, he had the red shirt pulled off his back midway through, right before the holidays last year for the Hokies, and boy, did he ever perform. He cogged for Tony Roby in a bright future. Sophomore from Kirtland, traditional powerhouse St. Edward. Sean, I love it. it the coaches said the nothing crazy. The they know something wonderful is about to happen. No. See that over under grip by Andonian. Trying to get those hands locked in a position maybe to start a launch, but Scott not falling for that trap. Ed Scott might be taking a book, a page from the book of Austin O'Connor, how to wrestle inside. He's got the two arms locked, looking for the trip. And Andonian takes Scott to his back for a moment. Look at the freshman pop right back and get the reversal. Tied it to right on cue. <laughs> we just talked about it. Someone's getting thrown, and that was just the first throw. You know, before this mat wrestling, it almost looked like a Greco match here at 49. All upper body. That return by Scott. Roll through by Andonian. Scott trying to latch on. And another roll, and out of bounds they go. Back into the center, 2-2. Two -two. 
inside trip there. But then he goes to the outside trip. Ed Scott Innocent, grew up in ready. central Pennsylvania, Du Bois, Pennsylvania, very rural setting. He was made aware of North Carolina State thanks to the Heidley brothers and their path, Pennsylvania natives as well. Came in with an expectation to win right away as a non-stop motor. You look at some of his attributes, and that was the first thing that Papalizio brought up was his motor, his engine. Time Pennsylvania State Champion, very mature for his age, and he's going through some of those freshman woes. These guys aren't used to losing Rock, and look at who Scott has run into the last couple of weeks. Certainly a test mentally for the young freshman making the adjustments. It's only three to two, but I'm tired. Like Side in first period. Just wait. Wrestlers will take a breath and we will regroup for the second period. Don't forget tomorrow on the hardwood, NC State and BC at 12 noon Eastern, followed by Syracuse and Clemson at 2 Eastern. At 4 o'clock, it's lacrosse on the ACC network, but then we're back on the hardwood at 8 Eastern, Notre Dame and Georgia Tech, all right here on the ACC network and ESPN app. Donian really good on top. He's good at getting some turns. But look at Scott underneath just explode. And for the second time, he's able to get the reverse. Hey, Scott, Rock, are you surprised with Scott's ability to get away underneath and get the offense turned in right away? It's just ain't fundamental. And again, that was the, the game plan and what Austin O'Connor did last week. How do you beat someone that's unorthodox? You stay to the basics. Look at this. A leg was put in, a little roll through. Don't panic. Learn like you did from Tariq Wilson. Just stick to what you know. Stay set. Come red. The original plan for Ed Scott was to red shirt before the COVID-19 hit maybe gain some weight, prepare for 157 following Hayden Heidley's departure and graduation. Papalizio, with Scott's talent, just saw too big of opportunity to put him in the lineup. Just too good not to have him in the duels. He's in a battle with Andoni and tied at four. Got less than a minute left in the second period. This next takedown for either wrestler is pretty important. I feel like, like Ed Scott is just feeling a little more confident right here. Just feeling like yeah, I'm just building up. up. I, I weathered the storm. I've I seen it. Now I, I'm starting to figure out Andoni and how he, how he wrestles. The aspect about Andonian though, he can make it lights out in a blink of an eye. He is a pinner, big move specialist. Scott trying to creep his way in, defended well by Andonian. Andonian gets to short time wrestling toward the end of the period. Oh, man, you, you think you're in good, solid traction and, and this is what Bryce Andonian does so well. Closes out the period with two and heads to the third period with the lead. I, this is just a feel. You do it outside, but that's not what you're supposed to do. But my name is Bryce Andoni, and I'll figure it out. And he figured it out. Get the takedown, ended the period on top. This is excitement. Come around. Scott will try to add to his riding time total. He's at a minute 10 riding time, trailing two in this third period. Start of the night at 133. Third weight class here in this battle as Endonium pops away. He'll get the escape and a seven to four lead. It, it's riding time is in, in favor of Ed Scott. So it's 
only seven to five. So Ed Scott needs to create the offense. Scott trying to stick in that underhook on the right side of Andonian. Now when he sticks in that underhook, he's gonna lock behind head and either throw it to the left or the right, depending on where the hips of Andonian go. Straight on Here show. We Here we go. And Andonian go. finishes it. Takes him to his back for two. Oh. This is awesome. This is, this is, this is awesome. Andonian with a leg in. Leading by five has wiped out the riding time as well. Scott trying to get to the safety of the boundary for a fresh start in the center. And remember, Scott has a couple of reversals. That's been his offense in this match. And here he is, he goes up, locks in the bear hug, and he cinches the hips and then steps over for a trip. Uh, Bryce Andonian is a little taller than your typical 49 pounder, so when he comes up for the double underhooks and locks the bear hug, he's so tall it's hard to get your hips away. Bryce Endonian bolted up seven spots after his week one win over ranked Campbell wrestler Josh Hyle. Put up 12 points on Hyle. And now with the spotlight, the brightest in the critical duel of the year in the ACC, the runner up from a year ago, Andonian, continues to perform for Hokie Nation. Bryce Endonian. Victorious at 149, and the Hokies up the ante. Andoni and the sophomore pushes Virginia Tech out to a 7-3 lead early from Blacksburg. It's almost like a role reversal from last year. If you recall at Reynolds Coliseum, it was NC State who jumped out early, won three of the first four. Well, here tonight, it's Virginia Tech. They've won two of the first three. Hayden Heidley, a national championship contender, will try to get the Wolfpack back on track. The three-time All-American looking to become NC State's first four-time All-American. He's never lost in ACC competition. Second longest win streak in the conference, trailing only Makai Lewis, who we'll see a little bit later on tonight. Connor Brady gets the call, the redshirt freshman at 157 for Virginia Tech. Now, if we're looking at the match, um, match up to who will win there, and referee just gonna say, hey, watch your hands, fellas, place, potentially right? dangerous. But if we look at the matches, we say, look, Corbin Myers has potential to get the bonus. So we, we can save four here. At this match, NC State is saying, we have the ability to get the bonus with our number two rank, Hayden Hiley. And Hayden Hiley tries to get bonus points every time he goes out there, says Coach Papalizio. Couple of falls this year, actually three falls. Technical fall, a major decision. So he's been able to secure bonus points consistently for the Wolfpack. The only match that was decided by three points was Justin McCoy of Virginia. McCoy wrestled him pretty tough. Idley was able to win 6-3, but other than that, it has been bonus points for the three-time All-American. Little technique right there when Connor Brady had Hayden Hidley underneath. Hayden Hidley kept his head right in the center and didn't move to the side and give up a side for perhaps a front headlock and tuck the head in. Just little nuances, little chess matches within the match. Brady is a young wrestler for Virginia Tech that is getting better. You can just see his confidence building. We'll see what happens tonight with Hidley, but this is an athlete who really didn't wrestle a lot last year. He was hurt. He was limited to just two open tournaments. So entering this season, really, you have to go back to his senior year at Liberty High School in Ohio for his last stint of consecutive and consistent action. Wrestled well against Virginia's McCoy. Had some opportunities to score. Again, like we talked about, the typical freshman path in this conference. Some nights better than others, but what they're seeing is consistent improvement, and Roby credited the confidence meter continuing to jump up for him. 
And look, Hotley is, is staying aggressive. He, even though he may not get to take him, but he's looking to half shots, trying to work for a stall call here. He is the aggressor here. Looks like Brady's is kind of blocked. Let me get away from this underhook. And there he earned the stall call. So we can see that uh, Hayden Hiley is the aggressor, earned the stall call. And at that point, that's going to hopefully loosen up Brady. Shot comes up empty by Hidley. Hidley with those heavy hands. We've seen some pretty powerful clubs the last couple of weeks. Sets up those underhooks off the collar ties as well. Three-time ACC champion. And a stalemate after three minutes. ACC women's hoops better than ever. Sunday at 2 Eastern, fourth-ranked NC State travels to Chapel Hill to take on the Tar Heels. It's all right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. What a winter sports season for the Wolfpack. The women basketball team dominating, the wrestling team continuing their success. We're talking about psychology in the match. Now let's remember what Coach Papalizio did at 141. He brought over the head official and said, look, how is that stalling? You know, he just got in there, got his little warning for questioning the uh, official. Now, this is going to come to play in this match, where you have someone that's heavily favored, like Hayden Hively, against someone that may not be as favored to stay close match. So he's going to be working the official, saying, look, look, let's be consistent. Call it fair. Papalizio has watched two of the winningest wrestlers in program history come through during his tenure. Talk about Nick Wisdowski and what he was able to do, the big, powerful heavyweight for the Wolfpack, and highly right on his heels as far as winning percentage goes. Going to call potentially dangerous. That was a shot to the face, so that will be a point. And it's highly with the one nothing lead. Well, I think what happened was earlier in the match, there was hands to the face, and the official said, hey, that's potentially dangerous. If you do it again, it's going to be an illegal hold. And so that's high. Hydeley got his points, and now he's in for the takedown. Now he's got to bring it to the center. Baseball grip, work him back slowly. And what Brady has to do is fight hands, fight hands. Hayden now he earns his takedown, patience. And this is where you start to see the difference between a freshman and a senior. Patience and start to wear. Got the stall calls, got an illegal hold. And let's see what happens. Does Hayden Holly start to open it up? Because Hayden Holly is pretty good on top with what's called a tight waist tilt. Left arm with that tight waist. Sit out, switch out attempt underneath by Brady, and he's away for his first point. So he's able to, to get out from underneath. Short time situation. That says a little bit. Here comes the whistle again. The and right. another shot to the face and another point for Heidley. And here's a takedown, walked him back, pulled the arm out, and got the takedown. Now, it, you may say, hey, that's ticky-tack, but the rule book states if you put your hand in that triangle area for where the eyebrows is, down to where your nose is, top lip, you put your hand there, that's an illegal hold. So he got warned as potentially dangerous, did it another time, another point, did it again. It's just being called by the books. I know people at home say, that's just right, slime. Hey, let's stick up to the rules. Hidley starting to flex his muscle, create a little bit more separation. Brady gets the escape, 5-2. Another wrestler with riding time. It's not a factor, so it becomes a match on the feet here for the final 90 seconds. Brady in on a shot, that sweet single kind coming around the outside. Look at the freshman wrestling top. Wrestling tough for Blacksburg. He's going to try and pull up the leg, get behind him, he's reaching. And what Hayden Howard is doing is stuffing the head. And what Brady's going to try and do is block the knee and get to his feet. He's blocking the knee. He's going to keep pulling up. Just like, the, like you're hiking the football. Bring that in. Oh, sneaky, sneaky by Hayden Highly to whip out of that. Now he gets to take that. Oh, Sean, that's just experience. Brady's going to learn from this, but he didn't panic. Hayden Holly did not panic and got the takedown. Stay your head. Still red. 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 
One green or neutral, neutral. Aiden Heidley, 7-3 lead, no riding time, and he gets two. Okay. Here, here, here we you go. start to think bonus points a little bit. And you see, here he is. Brady, but he just swims, just whips out of it, gets around, and gets the takedown. And so immediately he looked over to his coach, and I said, what do you want me to do? He said, go to your feet, because we're trying to get the bonus points here. Heidley looking for a couple more takedowns. Leading by five, trying to get that extra team point for the Wolfpack. Connor Brady just needs to cinch something and just hold on right there. He, he needs a cinch it, but look at this, he gets back to his feet. Hayden Holly's working hard for this takedown here. We've got five seconds. We don't like to say cliche, but moral victories for Connor Brady against the number two ranked wrestler in the nation. <sighs> well done by Hayden Holly. Staying composed. Worked hard for the main decision, didn't get it. We still got a good match coming in. ACC champion trying to get NC State the win. Tab Thacker, 1984 NCAA heavyweight champion. Four time ACC champion, first wrestler to do that at NC State. Was a perfect 31 0 his senior year and after his wrestling career, appeared in multiple movies, most notably Wildcats as Finch with Goldie Hawn, Wesley and Snipes and Woody Harrelson. Sadly, he passed away at the age of 45 in 2007. Then you have Darian Caldwell, 2009 NCAA champion at 149 pounds. Most outstanding wrestler that year. A two-time All-American in 2008 and 2009. His MMA nickname, The Wolf. And who we're about to see? Akai Lewis, 2019 NCAA champion at 165 and 2019 most outstanding wrestler, Makai Lewis. Black history always is a celebration of black excellence and black contributions within American history. It's a consistent celebration that extends way beyond the month of February. It's an invitation to listen, to learn, to explore the black and African American experience in sports. 165, Makai Lewis, 2019 NCAA champion, the first ever champion at Virginia Tech is crowned. He took the Olympic red shirt last year. He was still around the Hokie wrestling room, but training for the Olympics, but now he is back, refocused, trying to get back on top, win his second national title in as many tries. Thomas Bullard is not into me. He and his brother are the same wrestlers regardless of who they wrestle. They're gonna be in your face, tough. They know their limitations, but they also know their strengths. And what Makai Lewis has to do is create the offense and finish quickly on someone that's pretty good at tying up and creating scrambles. These two wrestlers are familiar with one another. They met twice back in that 2019 season, once in the duel and then once in the ACC Championship, both matches won by Lewis. 7 to 4, 11 to 5, the scores. So, Lewis has had Bollard's number, but as you mentioned, Rock, Thomas Bollard is the guy, if he gets on top and his ability to ride, he can be dangerous. Three time NCAA quickly, qualifier. Did you see how quickly he lowered his level? I mean, just nothing happened, but it just goes back into your mind, okay. He responded this way, what am I gonna do the next time I lower my level? This great thing about wrestling, it's so many little things that are happening within the match that we're watching as viewers. Lewis dictating where this match is going as far as positioning and they tag Bollard with the stall call as a result. One of the little things that he did as he was pushing and driving uh, Bullard out, he controlled the elbow. And sometimes people just want to push with their arms. He controlled the elbow, and as he was pushing, he was controlling the elbow. Longest winning streak in the ACC. Kai Lewis looking for number 29 tonight. More important for him, I guarantee you, the team race trying to add to that Virginia Tech lead. It's a narrow one up by a point through four matches. Pat Pat 
Alessio says that if the Bulls can get to the mat, they feel that they're, they're even. And at this point, with 30 seconds left, Bullard is doing what's expected of him. Just stay tight, don't give up a takedown. So Sean, here's the question. We know that Bullard is tough on top. We know Makai Lewis is returning national champion. Is Bullard going to take top? Is Makai going to go underneath? Let's see what happens here. So the choice is green. And so Makai says, all right, let's see how good you are on top. I'm going underneath you. I'm going at where you are strongest on paper. This is Bullard's strength with he and his twin brother, Daniel, who's on deck at 174. Quick stand up by Lewis, and he is away. So an early statement by Makai Lewis. He gets the point. Not even 10 seconds of riding time from Bowler. That's why he's a national champion. I'm going to go at you. Where you're strong, I'm going to show you that I, I'm not going to be dominating. Kai Lewis captured the heart of the country in his run in 2019. His parents watching him every step of the way as he knocked off Vincenzo Joseph. Nine Joseph a chance of the third straight national title. He entered the NCAAs that year as the eighth seed. He knocked off top seed Alex Marinelli, Evan Wicks, and then eventually Joseph to claim Virginia Tech's first national championship. And you look at it realistically, Rock, when you factor in the return of Lewis and Hunter Bolin, who will watch at 184 later on. Roby has two national championship contenders as Lewis shoots in. Saw that stall hand go up as well against Bowler. So that should be a point for Lewis. And he'll get the two on the takedown as well. Second stall call. Remember, it was Bowler who stepped off the mat earlier. So it will be 4-0, Makai Lewis. Staying aggressive and offensive is always advantageous. And so at this point, he got the stall call and the takedown. So it's really a three-point move there. Look at that, just the toes inbounds. I'm going to continue to uh, to get the uh, <laughs> to get the riding time accumulation. So what Makai did, he popped his head to the outside, went through the middle, got the stall call, and he did not let Bullard get on like a leech. And Bullard is pretty good for his position, but Makai Lewis showed he was better. Lewis in a good position to ride out for the final few seconds of this second period. Look at cross face, content to go up 4-0 on Thomas Bowler. There's Keith and Charlotte. Now Keith looks a little bit more nervous than Charlotte. I, I, I'll never forget the scene, though, after Makai won the national championship and seeing the, the jubilation on Charlotte's face, the big smile, the big hug. That is a picture that Pokey fans will remember for a long time. Makai's father was doing like every other father. When your son is wrestling, your nerves are all over the place. Who's the tougher on, the mom or the dad, when, you, when, you, when you're... Son or daughter is wrestling. Good question. <laughs> no answer. How about for you? <laughs> I don't want to embarrass my parents. <laughs> <laughs> For nothing, Lewis continues to ride. Makai Lewis unbeaten this year. He, he's coming off a, a narrow win last week over Kennedy Monday. It's a 4-3 win by Lewis against the explosive Tar Heel. Do you know what statement this is that Makai Lewis, he's saying you all are supposed to be good, meaning the ball is on, on, on the mat. I got out in eight seconds. You're going to go underneath me, and I'm going to ride you. And he is just showing, just not physically, but mentally, he's just showing that I am going to dominate in all areas. Oh, trying to get up to his base, trying to get up to his feet. Pressure being driven down by Makai Lewis back into that deep waist. 
smothering performance by the number one ranked wrestler in the land. This is impressive. I mean, he is riding a guy that, that's you know stronger on the mat. And he has put his head right behind his head, pushing and driving and pulling, just working. And at this point, it becomes a point where he, he doesn't want to give up the point. It's, it's not about I giving up the point and it's four to one, five to one, riding time secured. It's to the point right now, like, I want to make a statement that you're not going to get out. What a year 2021 could be for Makai Lewis. Looking for a second national championship, trying to get a spot on the U.S. Olympic team at 74 kilos. Qualified for that weight last year, remains qualified this season after a second place showing at the U.S. Nationals. Pretty good competition <laughs> to knock out at 74 kilos. When you think about Jordan Burroughs and the rest of the crew there, but Makai Lewis, special young man for Virginia Tech Wrestling. And the Hokies will go up 10-6 in this critical duel with North Carolina State. Not aesthetically beautiful, but certainly dominant. What a great job, the national champion going out, doing what he's supposed to do, take down, escape, ride, puts the Hokies back in the lead. North Carolina trying to get back on the winning track tonight, Rock, and they were able to do so. Austin O'Connor setting this tone at 149. Doing what number one ranked rank wrestlers do, come out, get a fall, and keep the momentum going to 157 with McClure. Getting back points, doing the right things to keep the momentum. Wrestling is a sport of momentum and just gritting, winning, and doing all the right things just to make sure you give your team the opportunity to win. 165 probably is the deepest weight in the ACC. Last year's champion Jake Winsel matched up against Kennedy Cole Monday, and this went down to the wire. It is uh, the deepest weight class in the ACC at 165. And look at this bear hug. Gets the back points and sets off Pitt with a nice gut check win. And then Devin Kane at 184 going up against Greg Harvey. He was at 74 last week, and then Devin Kane continues to work hard. And look at the Browns medalist, Cole got excited about the ref wrestling win for UNC over Pitt. North Carolina prevails tonight 23 to 12, and we will see Pitt next week as they try to bounce back our final Friday night duel of the year on the ACC Network. 15th ranked Pitt taking on Virginia Tech. Friday night duels right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Virginia Tech 10, North Carolina State 6, halfway home from Blacksburg. Corbin Myers set the tone early with a major decision. Tariq Wilson, Aiden Heidley picking up the Wolfpack wins. We just saw any national champion, Makai Lewis, pick up the decision at 65. So we go to 74. Dakota Howard, the redshirt sophomore from Cleveland for Virginia Tech. Daniel Bowler, the redshirt senior, three-time NCAA qualifier for the Wolfpack. Howard is, is uh, one of the favorites on Virginia Tech's team, and he gets stronger as the match goes on. He has the best motor on the team, comes exactly from the words of Coach Roby. And then you have, again, the Bullard just being tough, gritty, doing the things that they need to do, and he wants to get to the mat. Bullard trying to get the two first, comes through the legs, comes around the backside, has the rip and the two. So now Daniel Bullard starts to go to work in this top position. We have seen about as dominant rides as you can possibly have from Bullard the past couple of weeks, and we will see what he can do against the reigning ACC Wrestler of the Week in Dakota Howard. Dakota Howard has a different type of wrestler. One is just going to grind and grind, and one that has a good tank as well. He's got to do better on the mat, and that's where it is, and he doesn't want to get have Bullet to get the legs in.
Coach Roby says we just got to get Howard to the second and third period. We get him there with a nice, comfortable, comfortable uh, striking distance. They feel good because of his gas tank. Quick glimpse of Tony Roby in the corner for Virginia Tech, given a three-year extension during the offseason by athletic director Whit Babcock. Keep him in Blacksburg through 2025. Well-deserved contract extension. Job he is done. Kevin Dresser left Blacksburg to pursue the opportunity in Ames and guide Iowa State. Roby, the longtime assistant, keeping Virginia Tech strong. Howard desperately trying to find a way to get out from underneath, but Bullard sticking that leg in has him completely bellied out. And now working on a possible tilt and turn. See what he's doing? He's using his left foot to pull, and now he's going to try and stretch him out here. Can he stretch him out? A little bow and arrow action. They're still in, both legs are still in, they're still driving here. Good fight here. But that wears you down. Even though he didn't get a turn here, that wears you down. Takes its toll as you go into the second and third period. It's a big week for Dakota Howard, the sophomore, upsetting Devin Kane, 174. You saw Kane just a few moments ago get bumped up to 84 this week for UNC. I love how Tony Roby described Dakota Howard. He has a lot of will, relies on will more than skill. That Showed was some big. of that will underneath. That was, was able to get away. Yeah. There's some of that fight Roby was talking about from Dakota Howard. He's going to keep working, and then he, soon as Bullet dropped down, that's when Howard got his hips away and got the escape with eight seconds left. What timeouts? So like so they will take some time to clean everything up. Seen one Hydley tonight. Now we've seen the two Bullards, all pipelines, both from Georgia and Pennsylvania, finding a home in Raleigh. The Bullards from the Atlanta, Georgia area, Lawrenceville. See the damage they've inflicted throughout their career. Critical components for the success and the rise of NC State Wrestling. Same can be said for Hydley, Trent Hydley. Just his second year, what he can do tonight. One of our anticipated matchups with Hunter Bolin at 184. Speaks a lot about a wrestling room when you get the uh, brothers to come back like we've seen just at NC State, but you can say the same for Virginia Tech with the Epperleys throughout the years. And it's good to see action back here in the second period. Bowler with a 3-1 lead and a scramble now. How is that keep moving here? Because at this point, this is where Bowler gets tougher. And he's going to stretch him out. He's going to try and lift his left arm out. You hear the coaches, they're telling Dakota Howard to crawl like an army crawl when he did when you were in elementary school. He said crawl forward. By crawling forward, that right leg slips out and he's free. He's just got to move now. Keep working here, guys. Keep working, man. Easier said than done when you have a leech like Bullard on you. Stay basic. Stay basic. Stay basic. Keep working. Push him back. You, you hear the coaches are saying, he's not doing anything, he's stalling. Well, what can he do? You hear, you hear the mental warfare that they're saying to each other, saying to the referee. But the appearance is that forward is doing more. When you have your hands out like that, it's just not looking good. Face down on the mat, looks like you're not doing much of anything. All that pressure in the upper half right now on the back of Dakota Howard. Another match featuring a mountain's worth of riding time from Daniel Bullard. Already over three minutes. Any he earned just smothers you. What you can do here. 
John, I love this. I love hearing what the coaches are saying. Hit him again. He's not improving. He's not doing anything. So this is where Coach Roby wants, wants Howard to be, within striking distance. Now, granted, he's got to go against an insurmountable amount of riding time, but this is where they think Howard is strongest when it comes to uh, his conditioning. But when you get a little time like this, because what's happening is there's still blood for Bullard, there is no blood time in college. The referee says, it's my time for blood. And that means you can go on and on and on until the blood is stopped or what's called curtailed. So really, there is no limit for uh, cleaning up or stopping the bleeding. So it's not blood time, it's the referee's time, but it's for blood. I'll try to corkscrew that uh, blood drip from the nose of Daniel Bullard as we get ready for action to start this third period. Howard and Bullard on their feet. Virginia Tech leading by four. Bullard sprawls. Howard is right back on the top of it. Got hip pressure. Driving forward from Dakota Howard as he makes his way back up to his feet. That underhook still applied for Bullard, but Howard was able to disengage. And then Bullard submarines his way in. No control. Position to get two. No control. Nice two little right. single. Nice little single. So here's the question. Do you let Howard go and make it 7-2? You got the riding time and John get a take that. It looks like that's what he's going to do. No, he, he, there was no engage. So here we go. Riding time secure. So he's essentially 8-2. They're looking for a good shot by Howard. But better defense by Bullard. He's working hard for to get a major decision here. And end the match to a top. This is important. This is important. Bonus points are critical here. Forty-five seconds to go. Third period again for the second time. Howard shoots in. This time he's going to elevate the right leg. Roll through attempt by Bullard. Another scramble. Let's see if Howard can get a lay two. Bullard has that leg though underneath. He's looking for a Peterson. He's going to get the two. Oh, Daniel Bullard. God. Gut check right there. But now, so he's just going to hold on and get the stall call. Star call, stall call. Get, all right, so what happened was the official said that Daniel Bullard dropped down and did not work up. After five swipes, it's an automatic stall call. So it's a fresh start. Is that beneficial for Howard or Bullard? Right now, Bullard has a 10-2 lead, which means it's four points for NC State, which would actually tie the team score. Howard has got to get up to take away the bonus points. Oh, you're falling right into the bread box, though, of Daniel Bowler. To ride a wrestler for 13 seconds is what he has made a living on throughout his time in Rolla. And Dakota Howard, one last chance to get away, and Bowler rides him out. And a huge bonus point for the Wolfpack as we are even after six matches. You always look to your veterans, no one better throughout the years than Daniel Bullard on top, riding his way to victory, pulling the pack even with the Hokies. Coming up tomorrow on the hardwood, NC State and Boston College at noon Eastern, followed by Syracuse and Clemson at 2 Eastern. At 4 o'clock, it's lacrosse on the ACC Network. We'll be back on the Hartwood at 8 Eastern for Notre Dame and Georgia Tech. It's all right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. It would not be Friday Night Duels without the rock camp and the uh, emotion from my buddy sitting, uh, I would say comfortably, but, but you never sit still. So I'll say moving around comfortably, and, and that's nothing. Just wait till we get to 125. That, that's really when the rock gets going. But I, he, he might show some emotion at this one. 184, this is our marquee matchup tonight as you have two national championship contenders, two wrestlers in the top five squaring off for the third time. Trent Heidley, the redshirt sophomore, has never beaten Hunter Bolin. Bolin has uh, defeated him twice. Low scoring affairs and Rock, this is gonna be a steady dose of underhook after underhook who can get to those underhooks and set up the offense. Underhooks, 
positioning, and patience. Both guys are, are, are very solid from underhooks, and they've wrestled twice last year, knowing that it's going to be very, very strategic, and patience is going to be the key here. Idley has never secured a takedown on Hunter Bolin and his two losses. They've been low scoring, two to one in the ACC championship and then three to one in the duel. But Heidley has showed offense in his three matches. Remember, this is a, a sophomore coming off that emergency appendectomy not that long ago. He's able to make a quick turnaround, get back on the mat. He has scored a lot of points so far in his three duel wins. When you watch film on Hunter Bowling, he snatches the left leg of his opponents. He doesn't put his knee to the match. He just kind of lowers his arm and snatches it. That keeps the uh, opposing wrestler from scrambling or getting a rolling. And if he doesn't get it, he doesn't lose any position. Bowling comes after him. Getting off that center. front headlock. Center. Brings Heidley down to one knee near the edge. Center. Center. Bolin repositioning a little bit. And Heidley's able to scoot out of bounds to avoid any damage. Bolin unbeaten this year, 6 and 0. Full of bonus point wins this season. Won the ACC title last year. Utilized his red shirt in 2019. It was a loaded Virginia Tech room that year. David McFadden, Zach Zavatsky, all in that lineup. Let's see if the next time Hunter Bullen reaches with that right leg and just pumps. Let's see if Hunter, uh, or rather Trent highly reaches for that leg. The match within the match, little nuances, picking up tendencies. It's going to be just one, one moment, one moment that will be determine the winner of this match. Yeah, that's been the history with these two. One two-point move has been enough. Their hand defense, their heavy hands, their defense, it's just tough to find any cracks. Heidley driving hard with his right arm, trying to get to that underhook position. Bolin knowing exactly how much time is left. He's going to be content to absorb that contact. And we go to the second period. No surprise scores. Goes back to mat wrestling. Uh, college wrestling is all about mat wrestling. Certainly uh, being on your feet is important. But separation, especially when you get to the okay, national no championship level, all-American level, it's all about mat wrestling. Can I just Three hold on seven. long enough to get the riding Go time? Back. Can I get enough? Can I get an escape fast enough to not get, give up the riding time? And a quick escape from Bolin. Five seconds in, he's away, and Hunter Bolin with a one nothing lead. Left hand's down. So, Rock, you mentioned the leg. For Heidley. If you think he's going to get in on the attack, you're still thinking it's going to be dropping down off that hook into, into that single. You see that as an opportunity here for him. It's a safe shot. You know, if if Hunter Bowling continues to step hard for the like, like that, as soon as he steps hard, what Hunter, oh excuse me, what Heidley needs to do is attack that. So when he sees him, he needs to attack not with his leg, but attack with his shoulder. He's a head, what's called in wrestling is different types of standards. He's in what's called a sugar foot or lead with the right leg. So if he's gonna lead with the right leg, more than likely he's gonna shoot with the right leg. <laughs> you can hear Virginia Tech fans saying, that was a stall. Coach and, and referee Lynch, like, nope, nope, nope. It was just action. Can you imagine a full house inside the Castle Coliseum? A thousand voices would have been yelling <laughs> stall right there. In my imagination, I hear them right now. We're hearing it. 30 seconds to go in this second period. The escape by Bolin. Hiley will have a chance to get the equalizer in the third. It's a battle of 
wheels right here. I'm going to fight the inside position. I'm going to push you. I'm going to try and circle so I don't get shot off the mat. Ooh. 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 Oh, and on the last second change of direction, nearly whirlwind his way to two. Maybe a slightly early whistle there. John, that's what it's going to take. It's going to take one of those moments like that. Just, just one of those quick, quick flurries. Third period, here we go. Without hesitation, Heidley says, put me down. And now, Bolin with a chance to rock. That's where Bolin says, I think I can hold him down for a minute. He's going to try to lace the ankle, what some people may call a western, to sit on the ankle and try to create it. Quick stand up by Heidley. He was ready off the start from the whistle. Bolin latching on. Heidley making his way toward the edge. Takes a look over at his corner. And that right foot comes out of bounds, so back into the center for a new start. This is where mental toughness comes in. Now, Heidley knows I've got to keep moving, but now they're, they're, they're talking, the officials are talking right now and say, well, you know what, was there a lock in hands? So, exciting right here, fans. So, NC State threw the brick. Each team gets one brick, or when they said I can question a call or what's called a video review. Apparently, NC State thinks that Hunter Bolin locked his hands while in the control position. You cannot do that. If that's the case, that'll be one point for Trent Hidley, and he's still down, meaning that he can get out. So what they're doing, they're looking to see, was there locking hands? Let's We're take another look. Thing. So Hunter Bolton is in control. He's trying to bring it down. The arms are around. Is he down? Ooh, that looked like locking hands. There's no reaction time for locking hands. Now... Maybe, maybe they saw something I didn't, so they're looking at it again. Not the best angle to see from here, but right around when he starts to go for a switch, the knees are down, hands are locked. I think that was a great brick call by NC State for locking hands. Let's see what Kevin Lennon says. After video review, the ruling on the mat stands. There was no locked hands. To rock the reason Kevin Lenich, Fred Majerus, and that knee was down when the hands were locked, correct? I, I, I'm, I'm surprised. I guess that's why I got fired as a, an official. Because I would have called that <laughs> locking hands. That's why you're in the broadcast booth with me, right? All right, stand up, brought right back down. Bowling brings Heidley down. Third period ride, pivotal. Heidley needs to try to figure out a way to get out from underneath. And he needs to do it in 28 seconds to avoid that riding time point. This is, this is mental toughness. Can he do this for another four more times? Because Trent Hiley is going to continue to stand up, and Hunter Bolin has to continue to bring him to the mat. Hiley slowly working his way up. Bolin goes down to the ankle. Pick brings him right back down. An eye on that clock, lower left hand corner. Riding time at 45 seconds, and a referee start back in the center. What would you like to see Heidley change up to underneath off the whistle? Try something well, he's leaning different. towards him. He's leaning towards him, and in leaning towards him, he's trying to, to look at, he's looking to his left to block off. And he caught Cut off hand. that hand from coming in. Talking about Bolin's hand. Heidley. Trying to figure out a way to get loose, but look at the persistence from Bolin, and Heidley still not away. Bolin has that riding time, so he finally gets out, but Heidley's going to need a takedown in the final 45 seconds with that riding time. A familiar path for these two gladiators. Low scoring, coming down to the wire. Not one single takedown. 
A pair of escapes, and will it come down to riding time? Heidley certainly hopes it won't. Right side underhook. Heidley looking to scoop the opposite leg. We're down to five. Oh! Heidley drops in for two. Toe dragging the left foot. Let's see if they give it to him. No! Oh my goodness. Now, the toe drag here was control established with the toe in. Oh, it's just out. When we talk about the game of inches, that's like a game of centimeters. That was sneaky close. And remember, NC State can't challenge because they lost their brick earlier in this match. And you know what? That as I think about it, the locked hand, you locked lock hands, you do have reaction time. So that was the right call because you do have reaction time with uh, with locked hands. Oh man, what a mentally tough match by Hunter Bolin to win this and keep this a close match. Excellent wrestling with Virginia Tech and NC State. True freshman Isaac Trumbull has been the surprise in Pat Papalizio's lineup, trying to give the Wolfpack some momentum as we wind down tonight. Three weights to go, Rock, and it's been Trumbull showing the defense and the offense, but a couple of weeks ago, it was that hip pressure that he was able to deliver and fend off some serious shots from Nino Bonacorsi. When you have that height, you usually don't think a person is going to have strong hips, but when you have someone like Nino Bonacorsi who shoots 80 times a match, you got to keep your hips down. And he did a great job of keeping his hips away. And let's see if he can keep this momentum against another tough redshirt freshman in Smith. Upset number five, Bonacorsi, six to one. In his other two ACC duels, he's pinned his opponents. Nicknamed the Punisher in high school, he has kept that tradition in his first year in Raleigh. Slide by there off the elbow tie and a two for Stan Smeltzer. Quick escape though by Trumbull, two to one. There it is. You've got to get your hips away because if Trumbull jacks you up, he's six foot four. Isaac Trumbull won a couple of state championships wrestling from Millard South, suburb near Omaha, Nebraska. Grew up in Springfield. About a 30 minute commute each day into Omaha. Wanted to be a part of the Millard South wrestling program, a strong one in the state of Nebraska. That Greco background, a double All-American in Fargo in 2019. Not just Greco, but also freestyle as well. Papalizio told us last year they did not have many options at 197. This year they have plenty when you look at Nick Renan. Smeltzer in on his second shot. Can he finish though? You're seeing those hips. Told you about them in the uh, open. Was able to fend off Bonacorsi. Can he do the same here with a deep shot from Smeltzer? Smeltzer is a strong individual. So, Trumbull might be trying to put Smeltzer in what's called a danger position, from a neutral position. But at this point, he's not there, but he's looking to maybe get a danger. Oh, Smeltzer. Two more and a four to one lead. Hunter, this is deja vu. Matt Shaw was up four to one against, uh, against Trumbull last week as well. Trumbull took him right to his back, pinned him with a second to go in the second period. Trumbull takes a look up at the clock. First period winding down, a couple of takedowns by Stan Smeltzer, the redshirt junior. Smithfield, Virginia, second year in the lineup for the Hokies, although this has been a wait where they've used true freshman Andy Smith as well. Smeltzer bumping up away a year ago, moving up from 184, so a second year at 197. Wrestled only six matches in 2019. Suffered a season-ending injury, but is back healthy and 
Continued to try to become a fixture at 97. Rest of the way for Virginia Tech, and I'd say off to a pretty good start, a 4-2 lead. Nelson gets a nice sneaky slide by. Gets the takedown, gets an escape, and then he goes right back in, wrestles through this. Looks like there was lots of control, but he popped his hips, covered the hips, up 4-2. What a great start by Stan Smeltzer. Melter dropping off to the uh, right side of the body of Isaac Trumbull, and Trumbull has no troubles getting away. 4-3. Collar tie applied by Smeltzer. Couple of takedowns in the first period. Smeltzer, ooh, nice, I see. He threw the arm away, but here's where the length causes a problem. Smeltzer's trying to cut the corner, meaning get around. And then the length is causing a problem for Smeltzer. But Smeltzer's so strong, he's trying to suck it in. Ooh. Two wrestlers continue to cartwheel around in no the control. center off the high crotch. Initial shot by Smeltzer. No control, two reds. And the length of Trumbull, and he grabs the lead. Two points for Isaac Trumbull, 5-4. And if you're Smeltzer, you're thinking, man, what do I need to do? He was in deep on that high C, like you said. Just couldn't cap it off. Tries a Granby, but Trumbull stays with him. Now popping through a little bit of life from Smeltzer, if he can clear his left leg. Now trying to kick his way out. But the referee is counting the five count. Smeltzer is clear, tied at five. This is good, this is good fans. Dan Smeltzer hasn't really started too often this year. And now he's coming back against the hottest wrestler in the ACC. He has a trouble and he's wrestling tough for the Blacksburg fans going into the third period. Let's, that, up, please. Let's cover that up real quick. 14, 14, Okay. You hear the coaches saying yeah. mindset. You need to stay tough here. Nothing crazy. Oh, partner with one in third period. In a tight match like this. Fingers, match guys, here. We got two minutes to try and figure out this, this 197 pound match. Hey, give me a just just hey. scurrying. Hold on tight. Bottom, Fighting it. Bottom, gets the right. takedown. Reversal. The trumble. Six feet, four inches tall, Isaac Trumbull. Kind of resembles a Pat Papalizio in his day when Pop wrestled for John Smith at Oklahoma State with that tall frame. Same scenario where he's going to lift the hips, lift the leg. This is critical. Critical match for both teams here. Remember, a couple weeks ago, Trumbull rolled out Bonacorsi. As Smeltzer completely bellied out. Trumbull really is a freak of nature. This is a six foot four inch, 197 pounder who runs about five miles a day, every day. He says he'll taper down on match days on Friday, but that's about it. He, he logs 30 miles a week. Probably Geiger, the longtime North Carolina State cross country coach, I'm sure keeping an eye on Trumbull. Discipline for his age. Over a minute of riding time, leg applied. Smeltzer needs to get away. And a stalemate. Train's down. Stalemate, and that was a big break for Smeltzer. Now Smeltzer has to get out. Riding time is in a favor of Trumbull. He's got to get out if he wants to tie this match because of the riding time. He's having a problem with the length. He's got to push that leg away from him. He's trying to get his hips higher. He's got to swim. He's got to swim, swim, and just put your arms and start reaching for the head. But the length is a problem. Oh, 
day right there, so riding time is secured. Stanley Smelser has to do something, but it's tough when both legs are in. Rumble pulls the left leg out, still has his right leg in. Isaac Trumbull trying to ride his way to victory and pull the Wolfpack even. And he has done just that. This freshman is finding different ways to get the job done for Pat Papalizio. A couple of weeks ago, it was his defense. Last week, he showed the throw ability, that big play offense, and now he rides out Smeltzer. Trumbull remains perfect. We're tied heading down the stretch. There is a lot on the line in Blacksburg as we head down to the final two weights. You see NC State 22 consecutive dual victories, the longest in Division I. Iowa sitting at 16. Pat Papalizio and the Wolfpack looking for their fourth consecutive regular season title. And we are deadlocked at 13. The heavyweights and then the lightweights to close it out tonight. John Borst. They go with the redshirt junior, Virginia Tech. Stevens City, Virginia. Deontay Wilson, ranked 18th. Junior unbeaten this year at 4-0. Brock, an uh, opportunity for Virginia Tech. We weren't sure if they would send out the true freshman, Hunter Katka, or go with the veteran, Boris. And Roby likes his chances with the veteran. In a situation like this where you feel the pressure, the national audience, you, you want to go with someone that's kind of been around, you know, and then you consider Hunter Katka. He was really, really got a stall call against against Boris. But you have Hunter Katka who, who may not have had, he's only had six matches in college against someone like Deontay Wilson, who's had, had more than 50 matches. It, it makes a difference. Dante Wilson, an NCAA qualifier last year. He was the ACC runner-up, losing to the talented pit heavyweight, Demetrius Thomas. Third year in the Wolfpack lineup. Young man who has faced off against some good ones, some of the best in that NC State wrestling room and the RTC in Raleigh when you're talking about the big Gwiz, Nick Gwizdowski and Timmy McCall. All of that work paying off as he has put together a strong run and was able to come up clutch on a number of occasions last year for NC State late. Can he deliver on the road tonight? Dante Wilson has a good gas tank. And you'll see him at the end of periods bouncing in the middle. And look at him, he's stalking Boris. Boris has got to create some anger. Can't go at him straight ahead. Oh, 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 oh. Something happened. Something happened. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, no. You see the pain and you hear the pain from John Borst with his right arm. Oh. So. So this is what's happening, fans. An injury timeout is happening. You have one minute and a half for them to uh, uh, analyze, diagnose, and hopefully get him back to where he can compete. Uh, we don't know what happened. We know that uh, a tough individual like John Boris is, is in a lot of pain. And hopefully uh, they can fix this and, and get him back. Uh, oh. Oh. Mm. So as the coaches are there, the coaches there support. You can't coach in this scenario right here. It's standing for support. Heard the official contact. telling Tony Roby there's 30 seconds remaining in the injury timeout. Obviously a very concerned look on Roby's face. Jared Hoff, the assistant coach out there trying to encourage Boris as we take another look at that right arm. We didn't see anything that was illegal or something weird. 
Uh, so because he got injured, it now becomes the non-injured wrestler, Deontay Wilson's choice, and he took bottom. So you said, how is it 0-0 in the first period and someone takes bottom just like this? There was an injury. Wilson with a chance because it was his choice to get the escape. Test out that right arm of Bors, and Bors is able to ride him to the uh, boundary. So we go back into the center. 43 seconds to go, and just here, Virginia Tech fans taking a big collective deep sigh of relief to see Bors able to continue. And now let's just see what he can do and how limited he is as Wilson gets the escape. This is where Deontay Wilson starts to get stronger. As the match builds, his offense picks up. And you can hear NC State saying, stay on him. What that means is we know that you're going to get stronger, so you've got to break him. Don't forget, coming up next, it's Bull Men Not On Campus with Jay Billis, LaFonso Ellis, and Seth Greenberg previewing the ACC slate of weekend games, plus the latest news from around the conference. It's only on the ACC Network ESPN app. Wilson starts underneath. He was able to get away a few moments ago, trying to do the same here. Bors unable to contain and a 2-0 lead for Deontay Wilson. Morse at this point has to has to commit to something. He's got a stall call against him. And Deontay Wilson is going to keep attacking. Wilson already has a rank win this year. He took down Quinn Miller of Virginia in the duel, 2-0. Really a great story when you look at Deontay Wilson. He's the first generation family member of the Ting College, and he has really grown into one of Papalizio's favorites. Stall call tag to Bors. Any more action? So the stall call happened before he went out of bounds. So you have fans on said he got stalled, but he gave the action signal. That the stall call was because of the aggressiveness of Deontay Wilson. But when he went out of bounds, the official said it was an action, so there was no stall call. And back to Deontay Wilson. Hard work coming up from a tough background. Wrestling really provided the guidance in his life. And he's fairly new to the sport. He didn't start wrestling until his freshman, sophomore year in high school. It's a New York product. Amityville Memorial and the uh, connection to the Northeast, obviously, with Papalizio. Days at Bingington. In fact, both of these coaches tonight, Roby and Papalizio, different tenures guiding Bingington's program. There's not many scoring opportunities through the first five minutes for Virginia Tech and John Borks, right? You're right, but it, it, it just appears that Deontay Wilson has shown threats of scoring. Boris hasn't really shown any threats of scoring here. But we still have a 3-0 match. Still got two minutes left. Still plenty of time for Boris to create some offense. Quick stand up by Boris, trying to get on the board, and he is on the board. 3-1, to one, Wilson. Riding time, not a factor, so Boris Trying to calculate a way to get the two and the takedown. Heavy collar tie by Wilson, swooping with his right arm, trying to find any type of limb, nothing to be found. Look at him just control the mat presence right now. His back to the center, Borst tried to turn it, and he avoided the stall call, and that corner from Virginia Tech, intense. They know what's on the line. Bors is going to try and pick his man. 
He knows that Deontay Wilson is light on his feet for 260 pounds. He moves well. But Deontay Wilson is holding center, meaning his back is towards the V and the T of Virginia Tech. And, and John Boris's his back is to the outside. Deontay was. He's staying in the stance. He's not coming out of his stance. Banging ahead, still working. Trying to earn his points. Tie ups, heavy hands, collar ties. Head to head, these two wrestlers down the stretch. Now, here's what you need wrestling IQ. Deontay Wilson has shown that John Boris has not come close to sniffing a takedown. So he does not have to put him in himself in a position to take a shot. John Boris hasn't taken a meaningful shot. If Boris is going to pull something out, he needs to step on the gas now. 15 seconds. Deontay Wilson and NC State trying to go back out in front. Wilson knows he has it and the defense again for Deontay Wilson this guy is tough to score on he wins by decision and it comes down to 125 NC State the nation's longest on the line when we come back as we close out from Blacksburg at 125 Two years ago, when these two teams met here in Blacksburg, it came down to the tiebreaker criteria. Could we be heading down that path? NC State leading by three, and you take a look at the criteria, and it goes as the order listed. The first one, the greater number of victories. The second one, combined total number of falls, which we have not seen any tonight. It will come down to that third tiebreaker, possibly, with the total match point score. Here we go. Final match of the night, 125. Eighth ranked redshirt freshman Sam Latona for Virginia Tech. The ACC champion Jacob Camacho, the redshirt sophomore from Danbury, Connecticut for the Wolfpack. What are we looking for early on in this one, Rock? These guys have wrestled before. And last year, Latona beat uh, Camacho, even though it was his redshirt year. Also wrestling freestyle. So these guys are, are, are not new to each other. But Fingers. just because you wrestled last Release year doesn't it. mean you're the same wrestler. And I'm so excited about this. What this is just this is just perfect night of wrestling. You mentioned third meeting between these two in the last couple of years. Tona beat Camacho in the scuffle last year, 10-5. They met in the freestyle. Fingers here. Release it. As well in October, the U.S. Senior Nationals again won by Latona. Sam Latona, redshirted last year, went 20 and 2, wrestling Guys, unattached. Just enjoyed a big year of development when you talk to Tony Robin. Hey, they wrestling feel very in the confident. state of Alabama. They feel very confident about Sam Latona, not just as a wrestler, but as a leader, as a redshirt freshman. I'm the state of Alabama. My hands working. Trust the high C. Sam Latona is looking for a, a high C, which is when he's going to shoot to the right leg of Camacho. Work and Camacho is doing a good job there. because if he defends it, what Camacho likes to do is go to what's called a front headlock when he ties the, the head and the arm and spin around. Another good thing that both wrestlers are doing, they're moving their feet. You hear coaches say, move your feet, move your feet, don't stay stationary. Because when you stay stationary, ooh, good reshot. Reattack by Camacho in deep on that leg. What the flexibility of Latona. Ooh, we gotta watch, ooh. Potentially dangerous. Kevin Lennox jumping right in to stop it. That was a slippery shot, almost a, from a throw by. And just wrestled through this. Yes. 
Ladies and gentlemen, can't you feel attention? The nation's longest winning streak on the line. Last match. Two awesome freshmen. Ooh. Ooh. Matona comes up empty on the shot. Camacho pounces and gets the two late. Short time wrestling, and it's Camacho. He's got to hold him. He's got to hold him. He wants to end the match with top. He's trying to drop down. He's going to hold it. Wrestling IQ just dropped down 2-0. I mean, this is just quickness. He just, he just whoop. Houdini just slipped right through and didn't, it wasn't a shot. He just slipped through. 2-0. Returning ACC champion. Match on the line. Yeah, green? Okay. First caution given to Latona. He has a look of disbelief. No harm there. Third caution will be a point. Tone in a brief discussion with Fred Majerison. He knows the start critical here to period number two. Macho waiting for an opportunity to make his move underneath. And fighting as Batona tries to get control of that left wrist. Camacho trying to fend it off. He's inside the crotch area now. Camacho a sit out, pops free, and he gets away. 3 0 NC State. A Camacho win seals it for the Wolfpack. This is critical. We need a takedown either for Camacho to open it up or Latona to close it. This is, this is where you want to make sure that you are secure in your offense and even better on your defense. Now, Papa Lizio told us that Jacob Camacho is as big a student of the sport as he is coached. He carries around a huge notebook. He takes diligent notes after every match. Measures his heart rate consistently throughout the course of the day. Shot by Latona. Here's a scramble midway through the second period. No control. Latona's trying to cut the corner. He's got the leg sealed. And look at the length. The no length of Latona control. just might get it. But look at this defense. You got to be kidding me. And there's the two for Latona. 3 2 Camacho. It looked like he was close to getting out. But Latona finishes. So and point, now, can Camacho get out? He does. 4-2. Fans at home, if your heart is not racing right now, you're not a wrestling fan. It's 4-2. Latona's probably going to go underneath. And then we're just going to get to the And a stall call with two seconds left. Holy moly. So it is. It's the length of Latoni. He's not a short 25 pounder. Kept his head arched and cut the corner. We are got to, we got to, we're going to go into the third period with the match on the line. Green has initiated every single shot in this match. So that's why I hit him for stall. He got the first take though. Off of his shot. Okay. I got second warning. Second warning ready. Second warning, you can't take the warnings home. One more warning and then that's going to be a point. He's bleeding, you can go to the corner. There's a blood timeout, so the wrestlers to the Police corner, and you see the damage inflicted on Sam Latona. Now they get two warnings, the next one would be a team. Let's, Latona, let's, let's paint. Yeah, go ahead, let's, Rock. Let, let's paint the picture here. Four to two. More than likely, Latona's gonna go underneath. Can Camacho ride him for a whole period? No. Unlikely, but it could happen. But let's say he does escape or get a reversal. We, it's going to come down to heart and desire. This is what wrestling is all about. This is why it's the greatest sport out here. What a drama. These two teams that are going back and forth for dominance in the ACC. We have two lightweights at 125 trying to make sure that people recognize that they can be an All-American. The stoic sophomore right here after winning the ACC championship against Jack Mueller. And then you have Sam Latona trying to be the first national champion from Alabama. This is great wrestling here. I can't wait for this last two minutes. Here's Latona got cracked on the head. That's where they're trying to patch him up. So the blood timeout continues and 
Matona trying to figure out a way to, to knock off one of the hottest wrestlers in the country in Camacho. Winners of 12 straight. Pointing to his corner, he needs to get a, a quick medical job, but he's back out there. Two minutes on the clock. The ACC regular season on the line. These two teams back and forth all night like they have been over the last five years. Here we go. Camacho into the riding position. Stand up by Latona. Camacho able to bring him back on the mat return. You'll see Latona right back up, though. He springs back up. Keep in mind, Camacho has a stall call against him. He's got to keep working, and he's doing a good job of working. And you can feel that the coaching staff of Virginia Tech is going to be saying he's stalled and he's got to return him to the mat. But what Camacho has to do is make attempts. If he's attempting, that's not a stall. And he's attempting to bring Latona to the mat. Red. Just a little quick, Red. A little quick, okay? Stay set. Wrestler for me, guys. has Green a caution. Set. That time it was Camacho. A little bit premature before the whistle. There's the explosive stand up from Latona. Becomes a hand fight. And look at Camacho ducked down to the ankle, kept control. Latona back up around the waist, trying to free, and he is loose. And it becomes a takedown match. 4-3 Camacho, 70 seconds to go. Sam Latona, the redshirt freshman. These guys gotta keep attacking. Both guys are gotta attack. Latona has gotta attack to get the takedown. Camacho has to attack because he has a stall call against him. He's got to continue to work center. He cannot let Latona dictate them in center of the mat. Really identical to what we saw earlier when Camacho disappeared and was able to come around the side for two. Camacho trying to do enough. Look at this. He's going to continue to do half shots. And and he's going to take some half shots and try to get the stall call. And what? Ooh, we're making a spin. He's trying to chase it. 20 seconds. Latona driving hard off that front. Camacho able to clear the head. He's got to stay center. He cannot. Look at the shot. Look at the shot. We might get it. Holy, we might get the wrong through. No takedown yet. Do we have it? Do we? Do Personified last second takedown by the freshman from the state of Alabama. Way to go, Stan Latona. Unbelievable night for ACC wrestling. Oh my goodness. A look of disbelief on Papalizio. Take a look at the clock and the control. He's, he's good. He tried to do a wall through, and what did. What happened was Sam Latona caught it. The leg was covered. Good call, no doubt. And he's got the, rever the takedown and the back points. Oh my goodness. He just he just kept fighting it. And then he just tried to roll through. Sam Latona caught him. And then he crunched him and got the takedown. And the two near fall. Blacksburg is going to ape nuts. So what you're seeing are the officials going through the tiebreaker criteria right now, and we are deadlocked at 16. Greater number of victories. Each team won five. There were no falls tonight, so you go down to that third one.